The algorithm we will be using is called isolation forced. It relies on the observation that isolating an anomaly is much easier than isolating a normal point. For instance, if I were trying to describe an average normal point using a tree, I would require a much deeper tree to isolate that point than if I were to describe just an anomalous point which would require a relatively shallow tree. This observation that a tree that describes an anomalous point is much deeper is taken to its next logical step by concluding the same for an ensemble of trees for a forest, that the average depth of the tree that describes the point much larger. Now let's see how to actually use isolation forest in practice and whether it gives us good results on our KDD dataset. Isolation Force is available from the Scikit-Learn library. So I'm going to take my data and I'm going to split it into a training set, into a validation set, and a testing set. The validation set is used to tune parameters, which we'll be doing for Isolation Force to determine how sensitive it will be to anomalies. As a reminder, our data looks like so. There's a duration of the communication between two devices, the type of protocol, which is TCP or HTTP and so on, in this case already converted to numerical form and then some other information and a label whether this is normal traffic or an attack. I go ahead and create an instance of isolation force with default parameters and then I fit it to my training set to the X. Notice there is no Y being fed in because this is an unsupervised model you do not need to give it labels. We will only be using the labels to get a sense of how well it's performing. Once we have our force we can give scores to the validation set. Each point is given a score which represents how complex it is to describe it, how deep the trees must be to isolate that point. We then go ahead and plot the distribution of these scores and we can see that there is a cluster here somewhere. This suggests that these points are anomalous. They require much less complexity to be described. So I'm going to set my cutoff to be around here minus 0.21 just visually. And to assess our performance, let's take a look at the labels of the validation set. So these are normal labels, and the rest are all types of attacks. Now I'm going to look at only the things which are considered anomalous by my algorithm, and I will see that indeed it will only pick out attacks, and a large portion of them. In total, there's about 700 attacks out of 93,000 or so total traffic and it picked out about 600 which is pretty amazing especially consider it was not fed any labels. We can also assess the score in terms of the area under the curve of the ROC and it's pretty darn good 99.9% .9%. now I'm going to do the same thing for the test set I'm going to give score and I'll assess myself what kind of things it picks out and again, the distribution is about 92,000 are normal traffic and then about 1,100 is abnormal attack traffic. And my isolation force is going to pick out 800 of the attack traffic and it will make one false positive on a normal traffic instance, which again, I think is quite remarkable. And then our AUC score is 99.8 is again fantastic. In summary, in this lesson we built an unsupervised anomaly detector. Such a system is excellent for a situation where you have highly imbalanced data, inability to obtain labels, and perhaps even expect unforeseen new instances that you have never seen before, such as a new attack type or a new type of traffic.